Congressman, I'm going to start with you. I want you to take a listen to how Speaker McCarthy justified that defense spending bill this week. Just focus on the military. Stop using taxpayer money to do their own wokeism. A military cannot defend themselves if you train them in woke. We don't want Disneyland to train our military. We want our men and women in the military to have every defense possible. And that's what our bill does. The money focuses directly on their quality of life and, more importantly, on the investment. I mean, I mean, Debbie, it's like Mad Libs. It has no actual tethering to reality. So you have Republicans <laughs> spelling out what they perceive as wokeism. Well, well, we know their policies pose a real threat to civil rights and to the military itself. Talk to me about how that disconnect sets the stage for next year's election. Yeah, exactly, Alicia, and good to see you tonight. Look, I have no idea what Kevin McCarthy is talking about. Can he at least define wokeism? American military families and our servicemen and women that are putting that uniform on depend on a bipartisan bill that's going to give them the resources that they need to make sure that they protect our national secu security. This has been a historically bipartisan bill. It went through committee. It passed through committee on a bipartisan fashion. But then when it came to the floor, um, these extreme Republicans started including amendments that were attacking civil rights, the civil rights of women, civil rights of our diverse communities in America. That's who we are. And uh, like what you said re um, just before at the start of the show, um, Adam Smith is absolutely correct. It's going to be incredibly difficult for the military to recruit new members to serve. And it, once again, they're, they're attacking women because they are trying to deter women not only from participating in our political rhetoric, but also to serve on the military. And as they continue to attack women's rights, it's an attack, a direct attack on our democracy. And this is not going to be good for our national security. Right. I mean, Rick, we know this isn't going to go anywhere, given that they won't have the votes in the Senate. This is sort of a statement of principle and purpose on their part. And, and yet Democrats argue that the House version of the defense bill would make it harder to recruit, as Debbie said, a diverse body of individuals to serve in our military. I, I wonder, as you look at what is actually in this proposed legislation, how you believe it undermines our national security. Well, it undermines our national security when we can't pass the Defense Authorization Act. I mean, I'm, you know, it sounds quaint. We used to say politics stops at the water's edge and also at the defense bill. Uh, obviously, it doesn't. This is a, a stunt to appeal to their base voters. Uh, the idea that these cultural issues even rank within the top 1,000 issues in American <laughs> life that we need to deal with is, is kind of crazy. Um, and, you know, the congressman, congressman who, who uh, voted against this called the military, this was a social engineering experiment. The military may be the most successful institution in our society. It's maybe the most meritocratic institution in our society. I wonder whether he would say that it was a social engineering experiment when Harry Truman desegregated the military in 1948, seven years before Brown versus Board of Education desegregated public schools. I just think it's a shame to attack the military in this way. Uh, we need to back them. We need to support them, particularly, uh, you know, with the war going on in Ukraine. So it, it really undermines our national security.